my god, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. He's like one of my favorite. Hey, kitty cat. There's a cat over there. Kitty. Hi, welcome to Actorholics. My name is Effie Spence, and this is a channel for all things related to acting, especially for beginners, but we could all use a brush up on the foundations every now and then. Uh, today we are going to be talking about acting itself. Uh, we got into a little bit in the previous episodes that I'll link below about kind of some of the basics of the business and just getting started. Uh, something that I heard constantly when I first moved to Los Angeles is that it's called show business. It's 50% business, 15%, 50% show, sorry. Um, 15% show is kind of what most people do actually, but anyway. So I, I agree and disagree with the statement. I agree with it because it, like, yes, obviously you have to know what type of marketing tools you need. You operate as a CEO of yourself, like that includes actual tax bracket stuff and tax um, deductibles. So things like getting a costume for a specific project that you're working on and you can write that off type thing. So yes, you should definitely do a business of acting class of some sort or watch different YouTube videos and get an understanding of like what's the business behind it. But I want to stipulate that show business is a business about showmanship, basically. So if you if there's no show and you're just working on getting the headshots and spending all your money on your reels and, um, you know, trying to book a room in the audition and trying to go to different networking events and just you know, telling people that you're great, but then you're not actually working on the show part of yourself and you're not investing in, um, in yourself by creating your own content or, or working with, with other actors or taking acting classes or reading. Uh, that's actually what we're going to get into a little bit today, which is like kind of the foundational stuff to your show aspect of show business. So that includes required weeding, re weeding. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. The number one book that every actor should have is by Stanislavski. You'll hear his name over and over and over again in acting classes. And it is called An Actor Prepares. I um, I got, I think it was a free audiobook even, but I got an audiobook with it that I listen to every now and then. And it's just, it's the classic work of modern acting. So what is modern acting? It is basically everything that we see on TV where it's it's trying to mimic life. Um, there's farces that go really over the top. A great example of a farce would be Taika Waititi's work. Basically anything that he does is a farce. So you get moments of realism, but for the most part, it's over the top characters, over the top scenarios, over the top acting, and it's fun and it's not realistic and, it's, and we love it for that reason. Um, but for the most part, what we want to see on screen, I think it's shifting a little bit more towards favoring farces, but still very important to understand that acting is a reflection and the art of living, in my opinion. So if acting is the art of life, then your first step to acting and being a really great actor is to really live. What do I mean by that? Um, I mean, understand where you get your likes and dislikes from. So really start to understand who you are as a person because the more kind of in touch that you get with yourself and knowing all your own details, the easier it is for you to slip into a character and understand their likes and dislikes and um, what drives them and what motivates them because you're so familiar with how you operate that you can attach yourself to that being even faster and... Um, and more authentically and and you know all the great actors say that it's just you in those circumstances so you really want to know yourself to bring yourself to a character because that's what's going to make it jump off the page there is no character without the actor it's just words written down um it's really the actor who brings it to life and so in order to be a great actor you really got to let yourself live um do you the things that bring you joy and um and go from there that's that's rule one is live a good life 
buy all the books on acting that pique your curiosity. I was really interested in buying this book called The Actor and the Target by Donovan, Declan Donovan, I believe his name is. And it's all about your gaze and what you're focusing on. And it's, I don't want to call it a trick, but it's just another interesting perspective to get into a scene. Um, I think there is a tendency for for people to get so invested in their own script analysis that they're not actually with the person that they're acting with in that moment. They're just focusing on what they wanted to do and not really communicating. And acting, for the most part, is reacting, which you'll hear over and over and over again. So how do you react is yes, you do all your prep work beforehand. So it's just all kind of bubbling under the surface. And then you give attention or your target, like Declan Donovan was talking about, is the person in front of you or the situation around you or the circumstances that you can remind yourself of and you respond off of that authentic in the moment moment. Um, So An Actor Prepares is a classic. I highly recommend um, The Voice by Kristen Linklater. That's about vocal training and it's a whole like year long course within a book. So there's a lot of ways that you can train and self teach and not have to go to Juilliard or one of the, you know, upper crust schools. If you can get in, amazing. You'll find a great network of people. But if you can't afford it, or you don't want to, or, um, you know, it's just not the right time or whatever, then you can definitely, like what I did was look at basically what the syllabus was and buy those books. So you should definitely get An Actor Prepares, The Voice, uh, The Actor on the Target. Another one of my favorite, favorite acting books is um, from Harold Guskin, How to Stop Acting. That one's really great because it it's just like a quick entry into acting which is very full circle for me because I started acting when I was really little just in any local play or every single school play that I could get my hands in and um, my method was no method it was to just do it like I memorized it I intuited and then I just went for it and Ironically, after all my training and all my studies and all my digging and all my, you know, perspectives and everything, I'm back to that. So I feel like it is a journey and it is a process and going back to that has a lot more specificity now. It's not just doing it and winging it and and then not having anything to kind of fall back on. Now it's like, okay, I'm going to just do it and wing it. I'm going to go base jumping. But I still do actually have a parachute just in case. And the parachute would be the training. The parachute would be the bag of tricks, whether it's a Meisner technique thing or it's um, the actor on the target or it's Michael Chekhov who did um, more body-based stuff. And that's really interesting. There's two ways to get into a character. There is outside in and inside out. So outside in is where you allow all the material stuff to affect the internal stuff. So outside in would be like with external choices then start to inform your internal drive. So the way into it is the internal affects the external. So this is kind of where we get a little bit of like psychoanalysis and filmmaking and acting where you go, okay, this happened to me when I was six and you do the backstory and... Um, you know, this informed that and that's why she wakes up at 656 because when she woke up at 7 a.m. she was four minutes late and her mother died and that's why, you know, whatever. I'm just making stuff up. So it's it's stuff like that though where it's like the internal uh, process, the psychological phenomena that happens in a person's life affect their outer worlds. And I honestly think that the best way into a character is a combination of the two of them. See all of the above, um, where you let everything feed your imagination. So whatever's on the page that the writer has put in where it says she picked up her blue cup or um, your imagination with like what what happened, what was my earliest memory of this person, 
ev- anything and everything that feeds your imagination is important. And so for script analysis, what I like to do is I start off with the, the words on the page. And I read them over and over and over and over again. And then I write them out on the side because it honestly just helps with memorization. But I also picked up this this task from a very young age that I really love doing where I try to write the words as if I'm writing in that character's journal. So what does that person's handwriting look like? How fast am I writing? What intensity am I writing those lines with? Because then it starts to attach me to them where I'm already thinking about their personal choices and how it's translating through my body. So that's just my own little trick, tip, whatever that I came up with from a long time ago. I feel like I've always done that for some reason. Um, And then the next thing that I like to do is write out kind of a list of likes and dislikes. Like what is my character like and what is my character not like? And that can be anything. I don't like vanilla ice cream. I love um, basketball, like whatever, whatever your imagination is telling you. And then you just leave it. That's just an exercise to start kind of fleshing out ideas for your character opinions. Um, And then what I like to do is read the entire script. If you have access to it for auditions, you don't necessarily have access to the entire script. So um, you just try to create as whole a picture of this person from the page as possible first. You go with um, the givens of, and the givens and those things are all kind of the language that I'm talking about from an actor prepare. So like the givens meaning like, what are the things in the circumstances basically? Like what are the different aspects of the story? Like a given would be that this is set in 1976 in the Bronx, Um, it's winter, she's 42 like those would be the givens which are basically like the facts of the script and those are really helpful to write out just because sometimes we forget what the givens are and it's really helpful reminder to just go oh I wouldn't really behave like this if it was like 18th century and it was in public or whatever you would try to I mean you could because like let's say you have an outrageous reaction to something that would be an interesting choice, but it would still have to be grounded within the physical reality of what the givens are. Um, like you wouldn't improvise an expletive that just would not, like would not be that person's gut reaction of that time. So that's where you lo- use a little bit of imagination. Um, so after I kind of outline the likes and dislikes, the givens, um, I start looking at what the other characters are saying about my character and making opinions based off of that like do i think that that's true about myself or is that something that i'm not recognizing in myself myself meaning myself as a character um and then yeah i just let it fly after that when it's action feeling so stick around um we will talk lots more about um lots more so thank you Thank you very much. I hope that this was very helpful. If you liked what was going on, then just like and sus- subscribe and like do all the things that, that you're supposed to do on the YouTubes because I want to make money, you know? So like, uh, yeah. And this lighting is just lighting right now. Oh my God. Jesus. She's got green eyes. Oh, a butterfly. Anyway, have a great day. Bye.